Hi YouTube family, my name is Alicia English and welcome back to my channel. We are in my craft space today. This is the room that we are renovating to be able to have the downsized spot from where I had downstairs. I gave my craft room space downstairs, if you've seen me renovate that space before, to our boys for our movie gaming room. And so far, I do not regret that decision. I started going through all of my crafting stuff and it's good to just keep the things that you use and I'm just making this a really nice space in here for myself to be able to work. Just keep things a little bit more organized because when you have a bigger space, you just have a bigger out of hand. And so that's my goal in this space is just to make it really homey, really me, and just really like make this space awesome for me to be able to film at. While I was supposed to be sorting all of the craft room stuff the other day, it was storming. I decided to work on a DIY that I am dying to show you. I mean, there's no secret that I am obsessed with my horses. And last year we launched a Hudson and London baby ornament because we had just got our horses and you guys loved them and we sent them all over the world which was so exciting but I wanted to do an updated Hudson & Lennon ornament for this year for our launch because I know Hudson & Lennon are nowhere near the size they were last year when we did their baby ornaments and so while it was supposed to be sorting in the craft room I procrastinated and I made two of the cutest ornaments ever and I think you're going to love them. Okay I made a London and a Hudson on chunky scrap wood. I created their hair and hand painted them. I think they're adorable. So let me know what you think. These are now live on aliciaenglish.com if you want to get a set of your own to have teenager Hudson and Londons. I think next year I'll do an adult version. So we have like baby teenagers and adult, but I think they're super fun. They're the perfect size for the tree and they're hand painted hand custom scroll saw cut out. These take a long time, which is reflected in the listing, what we did for the actual ad for them, but I think they're adorable, so let me know what you think. But that's not what we're doing today. I just could not wait to show our YouTube family how adorable. I think they look just like Hudson in London, and I now need to make a set for, so these are gonna go on our family tree, but I wanna put away a set. So Chase and Dayton both have a set, so when they're older, they can have their own set for their own trees, because I think these are so cute. And I'm sure Nana and Papa are gonna want some and I have orders to be able to create these as well. So I have lots of these to remake. Okay, so during today's video, I need to rectify this wall. In our last video showing in here, you saw what happened when I removed the vinyl of the horse pattern that I was going to continue on the wall. I have left this putty stuff drying now for a couple days, I think since yesterday morning or the night before. And I need to sand all this off and then be able to paint this space, what I'm going to do with that. Philip's working on something for me to have on this back wall. God love him. And so he's gonna do that today. And so we are heading to the Cricut Design Space to be able to work on something to be able to put his idea into plan. But I also got something else this week that I'm dying to work on and I haven't found one of these in a little while that I thought was worthy of buying. But I always look and find these old jewelry boxes at the thrift store. And I don't know about where you live, but where I live, I'm nowhere really near thrift stores anymore like I was in Ontario, but the ones that we have gone to in Nova Scotia here, the prices are insane. Like actually going to the store prices, not like thrift store prices. So the last couple times I saw these little jewelry boxes that I could redo, they were something like $18, $16. And although that's still okay if you're making it for a gift for someone, not to upcycle and do for the things that I want to do. I want to buy them for like under $5. And that's typically what I used to buy them for when I was back in Ontario. But prices everywhere for thrifting or even yard sales and stuff have gone up so much that it's really just not that good of a deal anymore. But this one was because I picked this up at the barn sale that I've been going to all summer for just $1. I mean, that's a great deal. So cute box, right? I mean, even has Alicia English gold hardware already on it. So I don't even have to break out the spray paint. It's a little bit dinged up. It's been loved for sure. It definitely hasn't been something that someone hasn't used. But as soon as I saw the inside color, I was like, wow, that is just the color that's on trend right now. And I need to buy this jewelry box. So inside, it's Barbie pink. And I know I said, and I swore on a video, I would not do a Barbie DIY, but maybe this could be a little bit Barbie inspired. 
you know, I do not have children who enjoy Barbie. So this will likely be gifted or, you know, sold because I definitely don't plan on keeping this in the end. Because I personally, this isn't my favorite color. You know that I'm not a pink girl, but I think it will be fun to work on a pink DIY and bring this jewelry box back to life. So the hardware on the front here doesn't actually come off and you can see there's some sticker stuff that's here that needs to be kind of rectified. And inside the drawer, the drawer does come out, there is a little tiny bit, the felting is in like amazing condition. The felting here is just pulling away just a little bit, but just needs to be re-glued down. You can see that it's just, over time, it's kind of lost its gluing on the back. That's an easy fix. So what I'm looking for when I'm buying these is, is the felting inside super clean? Because if it's dirty in any way, very difficult to clean. You can clean it with a little bit of just open water and let it dry, but you're often underneath and in between them is often cardboard that they've glued it down to. So that obviously does cardboard and water don't really make a good combination. So if the insides are dirty or can't just be like wiped out really easily, then I don't buy them and I just pass them and I wait to find other ones. I also always look for cute hardware if the hardware is nice. And then obviously you want to make sure that they're in good condition or in good enough condition that you can just give it a light sanding. Sanding these is also difficult because you don't want all the dust all over the felt. So I always look also to see like how much do I really need to sand it where I can still protect the felt. You could um, painter's tape cover all of the felting and then sand it so you don't get any dust on it at all. I've done that before. So we're going to give this a good clean and a sand and then get to painting it while Philip is working on my surprise that he's working on. I know what the surprise is, so it's not really a surprise, but surprise to you guys, I guess. Preparing something on the laptop right now for Philip. He's going to make me something for the accent wall that will be behind where I always stand for my videos for my DIYs. In this craft space, it's nice to be able to just make that wall white because obviously we've known out from filming a few videos that that really nice sort of like whirly tan color that I made just is really not flattering on the camera and creates really weird light shadows. So I'm going to roll that white today. I put some putty on the wall already uh, yesterday late afternoon, so it'll be totally dry now. But while I'm working on painting that and doing some other things in this room, Philip wants to create something that we're going to hang on that wall. So I headed to the Cricut Design Space to be able to obviously use the design program on there to create what he's going to cut out on the scroll saw. So when you're using the Cricut, there's always like so many different ways that you can use the Cricut. If you think outside the box, you can use it for even more things than you think the machine is capable of. And 99% of the time when I'm using my Cricut, I'm using it to create a stencil for me to be able to create the shapes to make something else, which is what we're doing in this little DIY that we're doing here. So I'm going to use some removable vinyl. If you're painting, you want to use stencil vinyl, but I'm just using this to trace the vinyl onto the material that I'm using. So that's why I'm just using a removable, like any color will do, because it's ultimately going to be scrap in the end. So we've created our design and it's the size that we want it. And we want it to be three feet long which is why using the Cricut is great because if you're using a smart product, you don't have to cut with a mat. If I was gonna make something smaller, then I would have to use the mat um, if I didn't have a smart product. So that's why I'm using this particular vinyl. You can see it says, it tells you right on the back of the vinyl what they are, so it's removable. It's smart vinyl, which means I can cut, I think up to 15 feet long without using a mat with the Cricut. So I'm going to feed this in and then we're going to hit cut and then be able to transfer it onto the wood so it's going to cut from. So all I have to do is click make it once I have my design done and then just double check that everything is the right size. I don't need to mirror my image or anything. Push continue. It's going to find my maker three. So it just takes my computer a second to decide that it wants to do that. And I'm going to choose the material that I'm going to cut with, which is obviously removable mat. smart vinyl and then all I have to do is feed it into the machine and the Cricut decides and measures and makes sure that I have enough length and width for the design that I've chosen if you've made something the incorrect size for your vinyl it will it won't cut for you it will tell you on the computer that you don't have enough room so you can see that it's measuring which I think is really cool that it does that because I've had previous cut machines before I learned about Cricut and they didn't do that and I wasted a lot of vinyl that way. It knows I need a nice long piece. So it's taking extra time to measure. And now I'm ready. So as soon as it starts flashing the little triangular play button, you're just gonna hit play and it cuts it for you. It's literally that easy. I know that I do sponsored videos with Cricut on our channel often because I'm sponsored by Cricut Canada, but 
not all of the projects that you see me use for my Cricut are actually sponsored videos. I like to show you how I use the machine regardless, like for this, for today, right? This project that we're making wouldn't be possible if I didn't have a machine like this to be able to do it unless I hand drew it all out. And then, you know, fonts are difficult to create different styles when you have to draw it out yourself. On the laptop, it will tell me while it's cutting how what percentage of it cutting. So you can see it says it's 83% cutting right now, so it's already almost completed what it needs to do. It cuts pretty quickly. You can see how nice and wide it's cutting like almost the whole width, right? It's yeah. going to be big. Oh yeah, it's gone. It's you can see nice. the cut lines just a little bit there. We measured the wall space that we want to put it. On this wall, we have almost five feet. And so we want the actual wording that we're putting in the middle to be kind of central in the middle and in a straight line, not stand out strangely behind me with my head in the way. So I think we're gonna do what he's putting on the wall will be the same color as the wall. So it's just going to be a little bit of like a de detailing on the wall. And that's a good way for me to be able to, even though I'm rectifying the issue here, if there is any blemishes, you won't be able to see them hopefully in the end anyways. Okay, so that cut out so quickly. So we're going to now remove it from the machine. <laughs> wow. Phil's gonna select the wood that he wants to cut on. And then we bought some new blades for the scroll saw because I have worn out and we have done tons of scroll saw projects lately and totally wore out our blades. So we were able to pick up. I'm finding it harder and harder to find scroll saw blades. Apparently, it's a dying trade that no one really uses. And even though I know there are a lot of scroll saws out there, I'm finding that hardware stores are not carrying scroll saw blades. So I picked up some, but they're not like my favorite type that I like to get. And so I'm on the hunt for good scroll saw blades. So if you buy them, let me know where you get them because the ones that we're getting are kind of like, eh, you know, I want ones that I can do various different thicknesses with. And these ones are always just the standard ones you can get at the hardware store, but. to remove all the parts that I don't want because we're going to transfer on the letters that we want to trace around with a pencil. necessary when it's that big. <laughs> we really did cut that out so fast. It is such a valuable tool to have to be able to do stuff like this. Anything custom you can use it for, right? Or if you're not super creative and you want to just do your own thing that's on there, there's designs already on there, but obviously they don't have my name on the Cricut design space. So I just chose one of the fonts to be able to create my name. Okay. Transfer. Is it going to be big enough? Just, right? Yeah, just. 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 <laughs> For the millimeter. Oh my gosh. I don't really want to show it too much because, hold on. I don't really want to show it too much because I want it to be a surprise to our YouTube family when they see it all finished. So I'm trying not to show exact, I'm sure you can see what it is, but. <laughs> <laughs> he wants it to be odd and awe at the end. <laughs> all right. Let's see if it made anything this big with the cricket in a while. Yeah, fun. Takes me back to my sign making days. Yeah, we do this all the time. <laughs> it's that, I could feel my hair staticking to the. You gotta make it fit. I found the perfect size board for you, but <laughs> it might be too perfect. <laughs>
Oh, you're so good. I left a little pressing tool beside you there if you need it. So it's just pressing the vinyl down to make sure it's really stuck to the wood so that when we pull off the transfer tape, the vinyl's down really well because then we're going to use a pencil and trace around or probably black ink because it's easier to see, especially when you're cutting outside with the saw, yeah. to be able to draw on the lettering and then we can remove the black vinyl. Sometimes when I'm cutting, I even just cut around the vinyl. I just leave the vinyl instead of having to pencil all the way around. So it's just your preference on what you like to do better. Yeah. But it doesn't not cut because of the vinyl. You just follow the lines of the color of the vinyl, which is why I like to use a dark color if I'm doing that. Whoa, that was closer. <laughs> That's okay. I think you just forgot this little dot here. Let's go. That looks great. I mean, they can't see it, but they'll see it when you're done. <laughs> and then do you want to cut around the vinyl or do you want to draw it on? No, I can cut around the vinyl. Okay. It's just really easy to see. I like doing it yeah, cut across do the vinyl. Okay. To the scroll saw you go. <laughs> Are you going to cut it in sections? Yeah, because there's... The So the first thing Philip's doing is drilling a hole in each of the centers of any of the vowels or letters so that the actual blade can fit in between. Otherwise, he won't be able to cut out those circles. So there's the holes in the middles of the letters. Because he's cutting two names, he's just cutting the board in half. That way he has a smaller spot to work on. The depth of my table on my actual scroll saw is 18 inches. So anything wider than that, you can't spin your board around. So it becomes more challenging. He's just using the blade that's in there so that he can cut it into the two sections of the two names. And then he can change out to a new blade and then have a nice smooth cut. So Philip now has a pile of all of the different sections of the fonts that he's cutting out so that he didn't have to cut it all in like that great big board, which makes it that much easier. And now he's going to follow the lines of the vinyl to be able to create the font. After I cut my sections out, now I like to do the weakest points of the cut. So I'm going to do the insides of all the vowels right now, and then I'll do the outer perimeter. Because if I cut the outer perimeter first and then go on the inside, then I'm working with some pretty thin wood that if this catches, which it does sometimes, it'll bounce your wood and then you'll, it'll snap your piece and you'll cry. And no one likes to see me cry. No one likes to see Phil cry. He's basically right now removed all of the big meat off of the board and now he's going to keep the surrounding meat that he has on the letters in and cut the middles of the letters. That way he has the strength when he goes to cut the outer pit, the outer bit of the letters. Yeah, I also like to break down the piece because it's easier to move around and it also helps you like when it's doing a bigger piece, you can kind of do one step at a time and it's not overwhelming so you just do it by sections i can't get into this <laughs> it's the scroll saw blades they don't want you to use <laughs> let it all out the way no smoke in my eyes i can hear the wind chime it's so satisfying pulling the shape out. Oh, that's so great. So I haven't done this in a long time because I haven't used chalk paint, but I'm going to make my own chalk paint. I think it'll be really cute to be able to distress this a little bit in the end. And I think I'm going to go for a very light pink outside, but still sort of the same color tone. So I headed to my 
acrylic paints. This is sort of the same color tone as it, and then I'm gonna add a bunch of white to it. So I'm going to first make my chalk paint. So what I usually do is I just put a little bit of water in the bottom. If you look online, the recipes say one cup of water to two tablespoons of plaster of Paris. I always find that not chalky enough and way too watery. So I just like to go by, play it by ear, and it also depends on what type of paint you're using. These acrylic paints are often more watery than if you use like a house paint or something. So you're gonna wanna have extra plaster if you're using this type and less water. I'm just gonna start with a little bit of water, just a couple scoops of plaster of Paris. And I just pick up this at the hardware store. This whole jug here is about $6, sometimes seven. And I have been working on this one for like two years. You don't use very much when you make it. The more plaster you add in, the chalkier your paint is going to be. So it's just honestly about preference. So you can see this is pretty watery for me to just add paint in. So I'm gonna add two more scoops of Plaster of Paris. So you can see how watery it would have been if I would have used a whole, half, a whole cup of water with just two scoops of Plaster. It's just way too watery. color so we'll go with the light pink and the dark pink if it's already in the box then I think we're on brand of like the Barbie vibe right So we made progress today in the craft room. We were able to get a few coats of paint on the background and rectify that horse thing that I did that just did not work, epic fail. I'll never do that again, lesson learned. And we have our first coats on the cabinets on either side. I have the hardware off, you can see I have paint everywhere. These are just kind of like primed and a first coat of paint. So that is good because, you know, as you're waiting for paint to dry, you can only get so far in a day. So I think we did pretty good with the white painting today, considering that we only had so many hours to roll paint and wait for drawing times in between. Philip made me this amazing Alicia English detail that is now perfectly scroll saw cut out and put on the wall. So now I'll be able to, when this wall is done, decorate my space and have this nice accent on the back here, which I think is great. So cheer him on, he did a great job. And I love that he loves to use the scroll saw as much as me. We were able to also upcycle that $1 jewelry box into sort of a Barbie inspired DIY, which I think is kind of fun because I never do projects in this color tone or this type of project really often. So it's nice and smooth. It has just a really nice, like smooth chalky finish that's been sanded with 220 sandpaper. So it's just like, it's so smooth on the top. I did just the light distressing because I think it just gave it a little bit of character, especially since it had this neat shaping on the front. Obviously, I left the gold hardware. I would never change it if it was already gold. And it looks so cute with the bright pink inside. So I went with like the light Barbie pink with the bright Barbie pink. I contemplated just painting it white and then I thought, well, that's just no fun. I'm already painting enough white paint this week, so I'm gonna go with the pink color. And the drawer is great. There's so much storage in this little jewelry box. And we now have really clean felting. Felting's all glued down. Now all I have to do is wait for probably tomorrow at some point, I'll be able to just rub a little bit of a clear furniture wax on it just so that it will protect the surface so it can be dusted or anything like that. But I think that's a really cute upcycle to be able to give as a gift for just a dollar and a couple hours of my time today. You always panic after the first coat, whether you're painting furniture or a little piece of a wood item like this that you pick up. First coats look terrible. So never abort mission after the first coat because often in the end it will turn out amazing, but as you're in the process of the coats, 
it never looks great. So that's not a you thing, that's an everybody thing when you're doing this, because I almost aborted mission after the first coat thinking, okay, wrong color, that's just not right. And the color looked totally different once I got two or three coats on. I think I ended up with four coats once I actually had it all on and sanded in between. And then don't forget, if you would like to pick up your own Hudson and London ornaments on aliciaenglish.com, you can get your very own Hudson and London. These are again, hand painted, hand scroll saw cut out, made by me. And often if we have lots of orders, Philip also helps with the scroll saw cutting part. So sometimes it's a combination of both of us, but all the hand painting, everything is done by me. And this will go towards our barn build in the springtime and other projects that we're working on our channel. So anything that we do on aliciaenglish.com goes towards all of our content. So thank you. I'll, <laughs> there's a party going on downstairs without us. We better get going. Okay, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on tomorrow's episode. And if you missed getting baby Hudson and London last year and you wanted to get your hands on some, it's okay. There's a couple handfuls of them left, but once they're gone, they're absolutely gone and I won't be releasing them again. So they're on the site live right now with the new Hudson and Lennons for 2023. And the next season, I will be able to do something different for Hudson and Lennon as they grow. I think it's fun to have a little bit of a keepsake with our Hudson and Lennon ornaments because not only are they great for our tree, but so many of you are following our journey on what we're doing with the horses and they're part of our family here. So if you'd like to get your own, you can head to my site. It is all down in the description box down below.